Thanks for having me. Uh, I'll get right into it. Uh, I've been tracking the QAnon movement since October 2017, watching the movement wax and wane depending on current events. As part of my ethnographic media research on the far right, I've seen them change from an insignificant sub-faction of the alt-right to their own unique social movement. I spent hundreds of hours watching and listening to QAnon content and work with journalists, academics, and platform companies to understand their impact on our information ecosystems. QAnon is a socio-technical phenomenon existing in the back and forth between people and technology where the tools matter as much as the message. The apparent success the QAnon movement has had with drawing press attention has led them to adopt the phrase, we are the news now. Uh, this presented research is a slice of several projects I'm helping to coordinate it at the Harvard Kennedy School Shorenstein, Shorenstein Center. The growth of the QAnon conspiracy complex was initially the work of a small group of motivated actors who moved a small series of uh, cryptic posts from 4chan across social media worldwide. Like network social movements that have used the internet as an advocacy platform, QAnon followers have managed to create a resilient cross-platform ecosystem of content and influence that has shuttled disinformation across its various hubs for the last three years. Eventually, Trump, who QAnon followers largely support, acknowledged and tacitly defended the community. As 2020 has shown us, political representation is on the horizon. Several coup candidates were on the ballots across the country, including Marjorie Greene, who won a seat in the House, and Senator Ke Kelly Loeffler, who's facing a runoff election to retain her seat in the US Senate. Since its origins in October 2017, QAnon first came to popular attention when its supporters became visible at Trump rallies and spread globally during the COVID-19 lockdowns. Steeped in hyper-nationalistic rhetoric and anti-Semitic tropes, QAnon members engage in misguided research, network harassment of public figures, and blind support for Trump. They are not the originators of the, these conspiracy theories, but the amplifiers. They look to Trump and his allies for tacit recognition and rely on social media to grow their ranks. In 2020, the limited data we have from polling and critical reporting suggests millions are now aware of and may be on board with this movement. QAnon has become a fully networked conspiracy complex with numerous entry points for new followers, such as breaking news events, celebrity gossip, and political intrigue. The movement uses pseudonymity to avoid attribution, distributed amplification to quickly spread disinformation, and fostered by fringe alt-tech social media platforms. Acting as both news makers and distributors, they tout their influence as uh, distributors of counter knowledge, best exemplified by the phrase, we are the news now. The QAnon movement is centered around uh, uh, individual or group referred to as Q who claims to be part of a secret US military intelligence operation, disseminating esoteric propaganda to encourage support for Trump's imaginary crusade against the so-called forces of the deep state. QAnon has been described as a cult, domestic terror threat, or an alternative reality game gone wrong. Much speculation has surrounded the identity of Q themselves and what their true motivations might be. Like many arresting and confusing moments in contemporary internet history, the QAnon movement emerged from 4chan, specifically the politically incorrect message board. On October 28th, 2017, an anonymous poster slid a cryptic message into a thread about the Mueller investigation, indicating an upcoming arrest of Hillary Rodham Clinton. In the following days, this poster gained legitimacy with some 4chan users, claiming to have Q-level security clearance, building a narrative they had unique insight into a plan Trump was trying to enact against the agents of the global elite. QAnon's origins in this dicey community is hardly surprising. 4chan is the host to all manner of real or fabricated information leaks, including nude photos of public figures, leaks and spoilers for upcoming movies, and damaging political documents. Q's cryptic postings approximated the style of a whistleblower, just with nothing to offer but suggestion, implication, and support for a Trumpian agenda. QAnon's paranoid style is now widely mocked by extremists on 4chan, who view the community as being a distraction from an ethno-nationalist agenda. If QAnon is not simply a new version of the alt-right, what is it? Uh, we understand it to be counter-knowledge, a term coined by Damian Thompson, referring to misinformation masquerading as fact. This veneer is maintained, despite debunking, by alternative knowledge hubs that seek to explain the unknowable or refute established consensus. Many of these cases identified in Thompson's 2008 text have some representation in QAnon belief structures, and the community uses similar mechanisms to main their own systems. As defined in A Lot of People Are Saying by Russell Muirhead and Nancy Rosenblum, 
the new conspiracism of the Trumpian era proposes conspiracy without a theory of democratic change. QAnon believers position unknowable forces as adversaries, largely ignoring material reality in favor of vague assertions and embracing the style of populist rhetoric. This form of reactionary politics un unencumbered by rationalism has also been identified as postmodern conservatism by Matthew McCannis. Finally, I situate the mimicry of online social movements by the QAnon community in Joan Donovan's identification of how contemporary disinformation networks utilize the same tactics and technologies previously harnessed by leftist activists in the early 90s and the Occupy Wall Street movement. In Trolling for Truth on Social Media, Donovan details how far-right provocateurs are now using artful manipulation and the affordances of indie media to reach wider audiences. The techniques pioneered by social movements of the past are now tools for disinformers. While QAnon is not the alt-right, both movements grew in the same place. It originates from 4chan, migrated to 8chan, and then after the site was removed from hosting services following the Christchurch massacre, found a permanent home on 8 Coon in late 2019. The Chan image boards were designed to share memes, porn, and anime, not foster extremism, but their characteristics made them attractive homes for group ranging from the hacktivist anonymous collective, the reactionary gamer, Gamergate movement, to white supremacist terror. Hoaxes and campaigns originating on 4chan began attracting media attention in the mid 2010s, leading them to adopt the phrase, we are the news now as a celebration of their ability to impact the news and a self-identification as a form of independent media producers. During late 2017, um, the QAnon movement spread from these impolite corners of the internet to visible presences on social media. The movement received support from online reactionary figures and pre-established conspiracy theorists. The Interactive Conspiratorial Research Initiative expanded dramatically when Reddit users and YouTubers began amplifying these questions, creating the body of the conspiracy on various platforms. The anonymity of the original poster of these questions animated the ethos of the movement, which piggybacked off the naming conventions of the Anonymous Hacktivist Collective. Quickly, the 2016 Pizzagate conspiracy was folded into the mythology of the movement, reigniting and rebranding the materials used to support the belief system in unseen pedophilic abuse in service of elite power. The anonymous image boards are rough places loaded with horrific speech, gore, and the darkest pornography. Q drops, posts made by Q, became aggregated on external websites, made easily digestible for distribution for more mainstream audiences. Sites like QAlerts or QMap became databases for research, expanding into dedicated Facebook groups and slowly absorbing other pre-existing conspiracy theories, formalizing in the mainstream MAGA conversation. This network built by common narrative frames and markers like slogans, memes, and hashtags. Alt tech platforms with little or no content moderation like Telegram, Gab, and Parler provided Cube posters stable homes even after intervention by major social media giants. This serves as the backbone for a new form of indie media and distribution platforms for counter knowledge. There are many different sub interests and conspiracies within the QAnon movement, but there are five primary sub factions that drove online conversation and real life participation. QAnon grew in the Trump era and drew much support and amplification from the MAGA movement. Trump, the central figure in QAnon mythology, is an inseparable part of the movement, as is his MAGA sloganeering and agenda. The movement wouldn't have expanded so quickly without the dedicated architecture that was already laid in place by formalized conspiracy theorists, some of whom joined the movement and brought their pre-existing beliefs with them. Anti-vaxxers also flocked to QAnon before and after the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic formalizing the anti-science positions of the Q community with decades of disinformation and debunked studies that support their beliefs. A hyper-visible real-life action of QAnon is the Save Our Children set, those concerned with abstract ideas of human trafficking and satanic ritual abuse that took to the streets around the Anglosphere in the late summer of 2020. While less committed to some of the narratives found in the deeper Q communities like 8 Coon, the Save Our Children faction hyper-focuses on child trafficking and pedophilia amongst the powerful elite. Finally, dedicated anti-Semites have found a home within the anonymous spaces of QAnon. While the community influencers and slogans do not commit to explicit anti-Semitism per se, deep in the community, the more apparent hatred of Jews becomes, as does the ancient canards like blood libel and claims of a Zionist world order. 
these explicitly anti-Semitic individuals use the anonymity of Eight Kun to do most of their evangelizing. Amongst all the factions of the Q community and the multiple sub-beliefs that they share, their foundation and commonality is a universal distrust in those outside of the community. The normalization of these distrusts manifests in a fundamental belief that corruption, both visible and invisible, underrides all our social institutions. They, rightly or wrongly, believe that they're under constant surveillance by the FBI, CIA, journalists, and civil society. While the QAnon movement merged decades of American conspiracy theories into one unified toolkit for followers, it grew during the Trump presidency in response directly to his words in the news and on social media, particularly inspired by his co-optation of the term fake news to describe his political opponents. Q followers echo his claims that the media is the enemy of the people. Distrust of media motivates Q followers to do their own research, leading them to unverified sources, baseless rumors, and forms of independent media. They look to Hollywood as a text, seeing forms of social control and influence in entertainment products, and the actions of celebrities as loaded with hidden codes hinting at their satanic practices. This distrust in official sources and popular media extends to a distrust of government and elected officials as they co-opt and normalize the frame of the deep state from older right-wing conspiracism to describe the machinations of political forces outside of their control. The political distrust is expanded into scientific uh, distrust and the changing facts about the COVID-19 pandemic has solidified an already hard strain of science denialism, particularly around vaccination, the legitimacy of medical professionals and the nature of the virus itself. This condition truly helped propel QAnon from the fringe to the mainstream as folks who look to social media to make sense of the deluge of verified and unverified information that the World Health Organization has labeled an infodemic. Uh, as the movement is largely online, the QAnon community distrusts tech giants and the social media companies that allowed the movement to flourish for so long before the deplatformings of 2020. Subsequent platform takedowns of QAnon accounts and influencers fuels this distrust and reaffirms their own internal beliefs that they are being censored for telling the truth. While the material political beliefs of the community are all over the place in terms of a traditional left-right spectrum, there's a fundamental distrust of social liberalism claiming civil rights organizations and movements are orchestrated by powerful elite similar to and overlapping with the frame of cultural Marxism embraced by the hard right. Finally, there is a great degree of distrust of other social institutions. The deep church, a phrase used to describe corruption deep within our religious institutions, is used both by secular and Christian members of the QAnon community, many who, of whom have been evangel evangelizing within their own churches and places of worship. This constant state of distrust and the rejection of popular and scientific consensus and detachment from political and social institutions has become a fertile ground for the spread of disinformation. Disinformation here is generally described uh, as uh, deliberately false or misleading information. Practices of disinformation have been studied by many in a variety of disciplines and is formalized in critical research and journalism. Disinformation as opposed to misinformation here, which is understood to be the product of politically motivated agents who create, share, and amplify content to generate chaos and disorder. Followers spread speculations based on Q posts and insert their own interpretations and analysis. So-called Q proofs like the one seen here take the form of evidence collages, uh, tying Q predictions to breaking news events. The community holds these proofs as primary texts and elevates interpreters who create compelling analysis within their frames. These counter-knowledge documents hold more veracity to the community than any news source, though mainstream sources are used in these proofs when convenient. The Q community has their own understanding of disinformation. Q has several posts, like the one seen here, that use the term disinformation as an acknowledgement of the current vocabulary used to describe the antagonistic relationship with popular press and other forms of verified information. In these cases, disinformation comes not only from political enemies in the, in the establishment, um, but also sometimes from Q themselves. 
the phrase disinformation is necessary and other permutations are used to cover for incorrect predictions and analysis made by Q and top influencers in the community. Despite constant debunking from critical press, the community believes hold strong. Often these views uh, are factually inaccurate themselves and further validation within the movement as they communally work to debunk them. The communication infrastructure of any social movement is necessary for both the distribution of information and building consensus. The network nature of the Q community relies both on human participations and the affordances of social media platforms to operate. In our research, we identify this practice as distributed amplification, a call for participants to rapidly and widely spread campaign materials, including propaganda and disinformation. Distributed amplification relies on campaign participants to individually share sensitive or banned content on their personal social media accounts in an effort to evade platform mitigation efforts and dominate the information ecosystem with repetitive content. These calls to share widely may be explicit or implicit, and the posts of Q and the interpretations of top influencers are the highest priority materials to share. Using cross-platform coordination organized in private chats and groups, Followers are encouraged to game trending algorithms to increase visibility of materials that would otherwise be confined to the fringe. The distribution of counter knowledge aligned with the, the new conspiracism of the Trumpian era employs similar amplification tactics traditionally associated with social movements. This sharing is the work of so-called digital soldiers, those tirelessly spreading Q messaging to their own social networks. Inspired by a speech by now disgraced General Flynn, these digital soldiers create their actions uh, as insurgent online warfare, much in the same way that the alt-right declared themselves participants in the meme war leading up to the 2016 election. Up until platforms be ta began taking large-scale action against the QAnon community, participants would identify their affiliation through the use of hashtags, viral slogans, and memes, necessary markers to be accepted as legitimate participants in the movement. Community cohesion is also maintained by these distribution platforms and in real life instances. Slogans, particularly WWG1, WGA, or where we go one, we go all, uh, are used to encourage group participation and ensure cohesion. These phrases show up on social media platforms and in physical space. When platforms took action on Q organizing, these were the first targets for suppression. The QAnon community is defined by the interactions between anonymous users who spent their time researching, interpreting, soliciting, archiving, and publishing evidence of conspiracy. The question-based style of Q posts were taken up as challengers by many believers, one of whom describes their motivation and behavior as such. It gives you several dozen specific things to research to help you put together the puzzle pieces which makes them far more credible than 99% of the Anons on 4chan because you can go look up these things for yourself and see where the facts lead. The open source creation of counter knowledge and the distribution of conspiratorial frames and artifacts are both the material work of the community and their obligation to distribute. Just as the Q community helped spread COVID-19 disinformation and the pandemic documentary in 2020, they have shown remarkable adaptation to breaking news events. As the electoral drama unfolded on the evening of November 3rd, the nation held its breath. Civil society groups prepare for turmoil, journalists for rapid response, and tech companies vain efforts to stem the spread of disinformation. In the early hours of the morning, the network factions that backed uh, Donald Trump applauded his premature declaration of victory. Some turned to the cons these conspiracy theorists operating in these hives online to make sense of the unfolding turmoil. As Biden was declared the apparent victor on November 7th, the community began to recalibrate, continuing to question the legitimacy of the election and the potential future of the movement without the messianic figure of Trump as president. As mainstream conservative press acknowledged Biden's victory, QAnon believers turned away towards smaller news networks like Newsmax and One American News and doubled down on their own distribution networks developed over the past three years. Most studying the QAnon movement do not believe that Trump's loss will shake their core values. Uh, according to the new search tool Media Cloud, there have been 26,858 mainstream news stories referencing the movement to date. 
the acknowledgement was not missed by the community. Uh, this collage created in August 2020 by a prominent QAnon influencer named Neon Revolt encapsulates how critical press alone will not deter the movement, but instead provides the movement with the acknowledgement that their cause is righteous and inevitable. Despite waves of deplatforming from major social media platforms, the distributed amplification employed by the community ensures any available tools will be swarmed with QAnon content. We Are The News Now ultimately is a mechanism for recruitment, validation of their impact, and a repeated mantra for motivated participation. As platform companies have proven to be ill-equipped and unwilling to handle this problem in a transparent and equitable way with automated takedowns that often affect progressive activists um, and are centered around preserving a white, liberal, Western subjective position, there will always be exploits for motivated actors to continue to manipulate popular discourse. In the minds of the QAnon community, nothing can stop what is coming, whatever comes next.